I feel the need to give you the disclaimer that today I, I want to continue a bit of a controversial discussion on neediness. Last time I was pretty direct talking about the concept of neediness and, and intimating towards codependency and kind of really honed in on the betrayed spouse. I try and keep these blogs within a tolerable time frame. I meet uh, many of you at the EMS weekends and I constantly get feedback of yes, between this amount of time and this amount of time is perfect. So any longer than that, you lose me. So I, I really try and stay there. I want to tell you that again as a betrayed spouse, it's not about being vindictive and it's not about showing them and teaching your unfaithful spouse a lesson. No, that's not the right heart to operate from. The right heart to operate from is I've got to get healthy. If I just need you and I'm not choosing you, there's a problem and possibly the dynamic that's operating in my life is because of the fact that my unfaithful spouse doesn't respect me or choose me and perceives me to be needy and codependent, which is actually repelling them away. So today I want to talk to you about the unfaithful spouse being needy. Now I was always needy because I needed the affection and the approval and the attention of my affair partner, but I also needed the sense of affection and pursuit by my spouse. And that's a whole other block. But I was needy. So the affair becomes public, it's cut off, Samantha finds out about it, rages. There's this chasm, this space where I was and my relationship with God, and I know a lot of you don't come from that mindset. That's okay. Don't let me lose you. But everything in my life, including my relationship with God, everything was completely suddenly fractured. Like I was a ship on a sea of uncertainty and had nowhere to latch on to. So I latched onto my kids even more and I tried to latch on Samantha, but Samantha was like, no, 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 you're not welcome here intimately. And so I was incredibly needy. And a lot of times the unfaithful spouse is incredibly needy. And if you're unfaithful, you know what I mean when you're needy because you've got to have your spouse. It's like you're pursuing your spouse or maybe even still pursuing your affair partner, which I'll talk about in a minute, but you're pursuing them from a need, from a desperation, from a, I've got to have it, I've got to have it, just because you don't want to be alone. Not because you're choosing them and not because you realize this is where I want to be. It's more, ah, oh, ah, oh, I can't be alone. I've got to have one or the other or I've got to have both. And it's incredibly devastating when you're operating from a need-based approach. You need your spouse. You need your affair partner. And there's this decision paralysis. You won't decide and you're devastating both people. And I got to tell you, you are not healthy enough to understand. You're, you're blind, my friend, to how much you're killing your spouse. You probably are doing the same thing to your affair partner but you're devastating the people in your life because you're operating from need. You're not operating from a power uh, and position of choice. The answer, yes, I'm going to tell you the hard thing to cut off the affair partner. I'm also going to tell you to really reconsider rushing towards your spouse if you're rushing towards your spouse from a position of need. The thing that you probably need to do is be alone for a small amount of time. Maybe it's not a separation or maybe it is. Maybe it's that you are back home and with your spouse, but you're not in a place of let's go back to autopilot. Let's not go back to everything's great. Let's realize we have a crisis in the middle of us. We have so much residue that we can't just rush back into things. We've got to take it very slow. We've got to get expert help and we've got to navigate these waters carefully because if you're choosing your spouse from a position of just needing them, you have a problem 
You have a bear stalking you and you don't know it because I promise you, as soon as you go back to that point where you feel like, okay, I need my spouse and I have her or him, if you don't deal with the unhealthiness, it's coming back to ruin you. I speak to you from experience. There was certain portions that I just needed Samantha back, and once I kind of got that feeling back, things that I didn't deal with were coming back, and I had to deal with them. I had to sit with Rick. I cried. I yelled. I, I meditated. I had to really understand there were some things that had to be dealt with. The best thing I needed was a time to kind of sober up. We separated for a couple of weeks. But I had to have this time where Samantha didn't need me and wasn't choosing me. She was choosing to wait and see. And it was the best thing for me. And it might be the best thing for you. Here's some of the reasons, and I'll do these quickly, as to why you need to be alone. And alone may mean separation. Alone definitely means without your affair partner. Alone means also you may be at home but you don't need to just go right back to the way things were with your spouse. When I was alone, I needed time for it to sink in what I had done. I needed time to realize how I had affected so many people's lives. I was married, but there's a special type of aloneness, if you will, when your spouse isn't choosing you and you're alone with the voices that you have to process through and the consequences of your actions. Another good reason to be alone is I needed to realize that I was okay if I was alone. I was okay. I wasn't an infant. I wasn't a toddler. I needed to be alone to realize that I could be alone because then it freed me up to choose Samantha from a healthy mindset and a healthy heart, and a healthy decision to choose her, not just need her. Choosing your spouse is the way of freedom because you're, stop, you're stopping the ambivalence and the back and forth, and you're deciding to make a choice in the direction that your heart is choosing, not needing. Finally, life wasn't over for me. I was getting healthy and it hurt like hell. Can you believe that? I was getting healthy and it absolutely hurt like hell. Nobody was pursuing me except my kids because they had no idea. Samantha wasn't pursuing me. My affair partner wasn't pursuing me. My work and, and new career sucked. It hurt like hell, but I was getting healthy. I was sobering up. The fog was being lifted. I was now choosing, not needing. I was choosing, not just being codependent. So finally, if you're an unfaithful or if you're a betrayed listening today, I hope that's helped you. But if you're unfaithful, get help. Get clarity. Get to a position of choosing, not needing. And inherent, I know we need. Yes, we do. Inherent, we psychologically, we need certain things. I get that. But if you've ever been ambivalent, if you've ever caused an incredible, incredible amount of damage and hurt, you understand what it's like to be codependent and needy and not wanting and choosing. So I hope today, I pray today, that you can understand what neediness does and realize that it actually repels you from your spouse. Your spouse doesn't want to be the adventure they want to be part of the adventure. They are not the adventure per se. They are part of it.